Man, I'm super excited to be here tonight. I don't know if it's like this thing that I've been doing, like I told you guys earlier in the morning, praying, like uh, asking, you know, just thanking God in the morning. But thankfulness has been it just a big core part of, uh, of what I feel like God has me do this year. And it's just energized me. I, I don't know. I feel like the Energizer Bunny this, this week. And um, when you can attest to that, I've been getting up like super early and going to the gym. And it like snowed today. Most of the time I would have been like, now nah, I'm not going because I have to go outside in the cold and it's snowing. So I'm not going. But today I was like, nope, not stopping me. So I went to the gym and I had to admit something. If you see my legs go like this, okay, it's because I legit can't feel my legs right now. Like, I am literally trying to walk on, like, my knees. Like, you know what I mean? Like, my bones. I'm trying to just have my bones hold me up because all of this is, like, in huge amounts of pain. So I'm trying to stretch it out. But if you see me going like this, okay, I'm okay. Nothing's happening to me. I am just can't feel my legs. They really feel like jelly. So how many of you guys are having an awesome week so far? Yeah? All right. That doesn't sound like the most of you. How many of you guys had a tough week so far? All right, all right. How many had some diff- some things happen to you that you didn't foresee happening? That you're like, yo, I'm so mad about this. <laughs> yeah, me too, today. So, and I'll share some of that tonight. But listen, tonight, tonight I want to talk to you guys about obstacles being the way. Look at your neighbor and say, obstacles are the way. Obstacles are the way. Tonight, I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about opportunities. Say opportunities. Opportunities. How many like opportunities? Mm, Come on. That's good. I love opportunities. To do what? We'll talk about that too. But I love opportunities. How many like obstacles? Yeah, that's what I thought. The only thing I like about obstacles is maybe like an obstacle course. Like American Ninja Warrior, right? (laughs) Some of the guys are like, yeah, that's awesome. But... I want to talk to you guys about obstacles and opportunities. And I, the first thing that I want to bring up is how many love, how many have like favorite TV shows that are like competitive TV shows? Like, uh, like, can you name some? Go ahead. American Idol, an oldie but a goodie. America's next, ne- next top some I don't know. I've never seen that, but it sounds okay. American Ninja Warrior. Any, any fans? Yes. Hey, what would you guys do if you saw me on American Ninja Warrior one day? Yes, that would be awesome. I don't know how. Somebody sign me up, okay? If somebody signs me up and, and, and it's free, I'll do it. I'll even train. So I would. I would. Somebody sign me up, I, I would train for it. So anyways, that putting it aside, there's a reason we love these competitive shows, right? These competitive shows like American Idol. Um, another one that I used to love was Deal or No Deal. You remember that show, right? Uh, how about the older ones like um, Wheel of Fortune? Yeah. With The Price is Right. Jeopardy. Somebody said Jeopardy. Family Feud. Any? No? Love that show. What's the guy's name who runs that show? He is absolutely hysterical. He's a believer too. But one of the reasons we love these shows, right, is because the contestants, the contestants have an opportunity. Say opportunity one more time. If the contestants didn't have an opportunity, the TV show wouldn't be the same, right? Like, if there was nothing to win on Wheel of Fortune, you'd be like, okay, this is lame. It's just a, a wheel spinning with numbers on it, and there's nothing that's going to happen. If there was no winner or no, like, rounds in America's Next Top Model or America's Got Talent or, you know, American Idol, <clears throat> it would be, it would be it's like boring, you know? Like, if, if Survivor was, wasn't about having an opportunity to win something, it'd be, it'd be pretty boring. So we, we as, as, as people, just as people, we love opportunities, right? But we hate obstacles. How many, uh, how many have ever missed an opportunity? I'm going to prove to you right now that we all love opportunities because when you miss one, you're like, dang, I hate it when it happens. Like instant regret, right? When you have an opportunity that goes by and it was a good one, you have this feeling in your heart, right? Like, Ugh, something bad happened. Can I share one with you that happened to me not too long ago? Can I? Do I have permission? Okay, I'm going to be vulnerable with you right here because you're making eye contact with me. So my wife has these, like, Snapchat stories, okay, that, that she watches sometimes. And every once in a while, she'll be in the other room, and she'll start a Snapchat story. And so guess what I'll do? Because I'll hear the high-pitched voice. And so I'll, like, I'll, like, run. I oh, can't run. Dang it. 
I'll run over, right? And I'm like, what are you watching? I want to see too. You know, and sometimes, sometimes, and more often than not, her Snapchat story is done. And I can't watch it again. And I hate Snapchat for that because you can't watch it again. Like, I hate, oh, not the story, but the Snapchat. You can't see it, you can't see it again, right? Right? And, and like, you ever, you ever missed one? Or perhaps, you know, you're, you're watching, but you didn't pay attention. And, like, it goes by and you're like, are you kidding me? Like, or, you know, what's, what's another one? Or when um, one of my students brought this up. When the teacher says, you know, take notes, and then you don't take notes because you f- didn't feel like it. And then there's an open note test. The worst. Are you right? It's the worst. You're like, oh, I should have taken notes. Gosh, Lord, help me. Right? Or, or when like, maybe, maybe some of the guys can relate to this, but like, you, you know, you wanted to ask this girl out, or you wanted to ask this girl to prom. You felt like, you know, that she was the one. You know, and you didn't, you didn't, you didn't either. You either didn't muster up the courage to go up and talk to her. Talking on my macho guys over there. Right? You didn't talk to her and you didn't you didn't ask her to prom. And then later on, right? And later on, you're like, man, I was gonna ask you to prom. And then just like nonchalantly say, and she's like, oh, like I would have went. You know, and like now she can't because you didn't ask her soon enough and she has a date now. You know, like that that kind of opportunity is missed. You guys feeling what I'm part- trying to say today? Like, don't you hate when you miss opportunities? One last one. When, you, when your parents say something that's like, sounds too good to be true, okay, right? And you're like, you don't take them up on it. Like, if they say, listen, if you clean your room, I'll give you 50 bucks. And you're like, yeah, okay, they probably didn't mean that. And then, like, your brother does it or your sister does it, and they get 50 bucks, and you're like, oh, are you kidding me? I just missed out on that. You know, when they say, like, do this, and I'll do that. And it sounds too good, and you miss out on an opportunity. Missing out on an opportunity is... One of the worst things that is, is, it just feels bad. It feels like just instant regret. But sometimes, if you live long enough, you realize that some things that are blocked, some things that come up and become obstacles, sometimes turn out to be some of the greatest opportunities, right? Some things that at first look like a negative, at first look like a closed door, at first look like, dude, this is bad news, in the end, turns out to be good news, right? Every breakup that I had, okay, felt like the end of the world, like it did. I was like, my heart's ripped apart. I was like, I'm never going to live again. I'm never going to love again. I'm never going to eat again. And then I saw five guys, and I was like, never mind. <laughs> I was like, I loved her, but not that much, you know? <laughs> That's how I knew I wanted to marry Wendy, because, like, we were dating, and she was like, do this whole 30 with me. And I was like, what, what is that? And she's like, it's like this diet where you can't have anything good. <laughs> it's this diet where you, like, eat vegetables and fruit and meat. And what else? Well, that's it. No milk. Yeah, right? It's hard, right? The struggle is real. But that's how I knew. That's how I knew. I was like, yeah, if I'm willing to do this for her, they gave up burgers, five guys, all these different things. I was like, this, this is real. This is real. It's real. What we got here is real, babe. So anyways. But every breakup that I had at that moment, in that, in that season of my life, when I was up against the wall, when I was up against what seemed like an obstacle, right? Where what seemed as like a detour, what seemed as something negative or a red light, at that moment felt like it was the worst thing that could have happened. And now looking back, I'm like, man, that was like some of the best thing that could happen. Because I look back on Facebook, thank God for Facebook, because, you know, they do these like, you have a memory with so-and-so. And I'm like, ooh. Ooh, all right, well, <laughs> I made the right choice. Thank you, Jesus. So, but I want to talk about opportunities, and I want to talk about obstacles, because we all have them. We all have opportunities that are going to come by, and we all have obstacles that are going to seem like it's the end for us, and, and, and it's meant to stop us. But really, sometimes it turns out to be some of the best opportunities. Um. Uh, one of, and I'm going to give you one last example, and then we're going to get to, to, to God's word. But, you know, when, when Wendy and I were getting married, we didn't have enough money. And uh, I, we had two cars. We had my red nice car, right, my Hyundai Elantra 2014-13 with heated seats, which Wendy's car doesn't have. But 
I won't say anything else about that because heated seats are the best. But anyways, all right, we had heated seats. It was awesome. And then I crashed it, just smashed it into a tree, okay? It was a winter storm. I hit a, I hit black ice on a turn and just went straight into a tree. And, uh, yeah, you guys remember that night. It was, uh, it was awful. I cried a little bit. Yeah, I squeezed out a little tear. I was like, my car, my heated seats. <laughs> now I have cold seats. And um, so anyways... But that, that ended up being a huge blessing because we ended up being able to uh, turn it around. Uh, the car was, uh, was total, completely totaled, okay? And they gave us, what, like $8,000 to be able to pay towards the wedding, which is how we got married and how we went to Cancun. So, woohoo! It was awesome. Moylan's had the same thing. They had an older car. They got into a car accident. And what looked like a negative thing ended up turning out to be a good thing because uh, they ended up, the car, again, was totaled. They got a check, and they were able to get a brand new car. Come on. Brand new car. Just for getting an accident, I will take that. So sometimes opportunities look bad, but they're good in the end. And my, what, what, I, what I want to do tonight, guys, is this. We have these mentalities sometimes. We have these, these strongholds of these ways of thinking in our mind, right? And perhaps you've heard this said this way. Uh, I haven't mean, even heard of a, of a cup half full or half empty, right? And, like, we would love to think that we're, like, half full kind of people. That we're, like, man, that cup's half full, right? But when I see a cup of soda, I'm, like, no, that's, that's half empty. We need to add more soda to that, you know? We would love to think the best about ourselves and that we're optimist. But sometimes the truth is if, if we're really factual, if we're really just, you know, lovers of truth and we're honest with ourselves, we've realized that most of the time when we meet an obstacle, we are uh, the, the type of people that are half empty. And so the scripture for tonight is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 and 16, which also happens to be our theme for this entire year here at Cornerstone Church. So it reads, be very careful then how you live. I'm going to repeat that part. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. Look at your neighbor and say opportunity. You're going to learn that word today. All right. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Understand what the Lord's will is. One of the first things that when I read this, one of the first things that comes to mind is, uh, he, I just love the way that he says, be very careful. Be very careful how you live your life. Because it's easy, and it's almost like the automatic mode, the preset mode in how we live our life is not careful. Right? Like, we just, we just live. Like, I, it's like, I don't have to try to live. It just happens. I just wake up in the morning, and, like, I know what to do. Okay, I got to eat. Okay, I should go work out. Depends if I want to, if I don't want to. Depends if I snooze, if I didn't snooze. Right? There's, there's, there's really no, like, you can live life almost on auto, autopilot. Right? You can live life and literally miss life. But I, I'm talking to you tonight about being and living life carefully. Living life with intentionality. Living life with making sure that every step. You ever, you ever walked out and it's like complete ice? That's, that's what this word means. Like live carefully. With every step that you take, making sure that you're not going to slip. Making sure that every single step that you take, right, is a solid step. Yeah, on Monday I did legs, okay? When I got out of the gym, I, I kid you not, okay? I had, to, I had to live like this. I had to literally, like, do this because I was like, I don't know if my leg's going to hold me. I was walking like an astronaut, just, like, straight up, like, on the moon, you know? I, w I was walking down the stairs and my legs were giving out. But I had to make sure that every step I took was on purpose, was intentional, and I was careful about every single step that I take. We have to live our lives in such a way because the truth is that there's, there's traps. You know, there's traps in, 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 in life. There's things that are going to come your way that are going to try to make you slip. They're going to try to make you fall. They're going to try to ensnare you or become a stronghold so you can't, like, get your foot out of it. That's just life in general. There are traps set for you in life. The Bible says that we have an enemy, and he's not only an enemy, but he is like a lion 
No, he is, it's a simile, okay? He is like a lion. He is not a lion. He is like one. And he's at your door, right, trying to get in. He's trying to find places in which he can lay traps and get your, your, your foothold to, to, to falter. Live very carefully. Man, time has gone by today. Second thing is live wisely. We literally live in a world where things don't make sense. I, I don't know if you knew this. But lit- like stuff doesn't make sense anymore. Like if you want to be six year a six year old girl, okay, but you're an eighteen year old man, it's apparently okay to do that now. Like, okay, if you want to be a cat or a lizard, like all of a sudden in 2018, it's like sure, you were born a human, but obviously you're a cat. So we're gonna let you be a cat, and we're gonna talk to you like a cat. Right, we're gonna feed your cat. And if you don't, if you think I'm kidding, it's like it's on YouTube. There's literally cat people out there. There's like there's lizard people out there. Okay, like doing weird kinds of stuff. Like stuff doesn't make sense anymore. Like legit, it li- like it's it's like a little scary. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, <gasps> these are the people who are gonna run the world at some point. <laughs> Cats and lizards. <laughs> I'm scared. And six year old kindergartners. But the truth is. The truth is this, is that the world doesn't make sense anymore. The Bible talks about these days. The Bible talks about these last days where things are going to be called good that aren't good. They're evil, but they're going to call them good, right? They're going to call uh, evil good and they're going to call good evil. You know what I find interesting? If you're here for the first, if you're here and, and, and you know, this whole Bible thing is new to you and, and you're like, I'm not so sure about this Bible thing. The Bible is the only book that talks about the end times and describes what's happening today. It's, it's the only book that talks about the end times this way. It says the days are going to get shorter. It says the days are going to get more evil. They're going to be like the days of Noah. And they're going to call good evil and evil good. Right? And it's, and it's exactly what's happening. There's, there's all kinds of crazy stuff just, just passing as, as good now. All right. So live wisely. Not only do you have to live wisely, but you have to realize that wise isn't the same thing as being intelligent. Right? Like you could be real smart, you could be real book smart, and you can still be a really, really dumb person, like with no common sense. Okay? You could be like a, almost like a, like a book smart individual and have no knowledge or no, no wisdom on how to use that intelligence. You ever met someone, perhaps in your school, and if you do know them, please don't say anything, but, or name them. But perhaps in your school you know someone, right? And like they're really smart. But, like, they're terrible with talking to girls or vice versa, talking to guys, and they're jerks, right? And you're like, if you were, like, really, like, if you were really wise, you would just be nice to the girls. And you would realize that that's what they actually like, you know? Like, I, I understand that you're really smart and you know, like, the second laws of thermodynamics by heart. But that's not re- really, <laughs> William's like, yeah, I know those. <laughs> Woo! You know, and I know that you can name every element in order, okay? But, you know, being nice to the girl would probably get you a lot further. So, but that being said, there's a lot of people that are, that, are, that, are, that are intelligent but aren't wise, right? And I had, as I was preparing this sermon, I had this, this picture in my mind, this picture in my mind of how to differentiate between wisdom and, and intelligence. And there's another piece, because you guys have heard it, you know, knowledge is power, Right? Knowledge is like a key, right? Knowledge is like a key. Intelligent people are like the kind of people that have a lot of keys. Like you ever see a janitor? They have like a thousand keys, right? They have like a key to every door, you know, okay? Intelligent people have a lot of keys. One, one of the keys of intelligence is knowledge. So that's just one key. There's a lot of other keys, right? Intelligence is like having a lot of keys. Wisdom is knowing how to use a key in a door, you can have all the brains in the world. You could be the smartest person in the world. But, like, if you don't know how to apply your intelligence, how do you actually use the key and open the door, it does you no good. Wisdom is the ability to tell right from wrong, right? The Bible says that the beginning of wisdom is fearing the Lord, that when you fear the Lord, when you get to know God intimately, you all of a sudden you are privy to, to knowing right from wrong, like I said, you can have all the wisdom in the world, but if you don't know what right from wrong is, it will do you no good. So live wisely. 
the, the truth is sometimes situations don't necessarily require intelligence, but they require wisdom, a.k.a. that guy who's a jerk and probably should just be nice to people. You know, perfect example. The third thing is, and, and, I, and I don't have a lot of time, but I want to kind of sit here about making the most out of every situation. Making the most out of every situation. Not every situation is the same. Not every situation is going to yield the same type of reward. But the Bible says to make the most out of every situation. Maybe you find yourself in a great situation. Maybe everything's great. Maybe, maybe you, you like practically live at church, okay, and you have a million mentors and, and, and life is just awesome and everything is great. Schooling is great. You get A's like without even studying. You don't even have to look at the book. You're just like straight up osmosis. You put it to your head and all the knowledge just leaks in. What? It is a biologi- biological term. Do you, does anyone know what osmosis means? <laughs> you just, Okay. So, but anyways, but the Bible says make the most out of those situations that you're in. Make the most out of it. Maybe you find yourself in a bad situation. Students, listen, maybe, maybe you're here tonight and you find yourself in a bad situation. I want to challenge you to make the most out of the situation. Make the most out of it. How do you do that? By living carefully. Making sure that every step you take is intentional, on purpose, Right? Sure-footedness. Secondly, living wisely, knowing right from wrong. What? Okay, I thought I was tripping for a second. All of Facebook now saw that. Okay, it's back there. I'm going to close my eyes, and I'm just going to keep preaching. So I can't, literally can't look. Everyone, close your eyes. We're going to have... I can't see. Like, in my eyes, that's just going to. All right. Um, Wendy, can you go help them? They might need some help. Just press it all the way down. Blackout. No, 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 no. All right, I will go figure it out. I'll be right back. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Give it up for the tech team. All right. Well, all right. All right. Moving on, moving forward. Sorry about that, guys. I just didn't want anyone to have like a crazy, you know, episode with the lights. So, good job, tech team. Good job. Wait, if, can you guys give it up for the tech team figuring it out? <laughs> All right, guys. So listen, Shh. listen up real quick. Shh. This is my last point. I just is all I'm gonna say. So listen, live, live to make the most out of every opportunity. Live to make the most out of every opportunity. I talked to you guys about challenging the way that you think about things and not seeing things as half empty, but seeing things as half full, even when there's an obstacle in your way. Today, um, and it also says, I, I find it interesting that it says in verse 16, after it says, making the most out of every opportunity because the days are evil, it says, therefore, do not be foolish, Right? But understand what the Lord's will is. Let me ask you something. Everybody, keep your eyes on me. All right. Nobody look at the clock. Nobody look at their phone. Can you tell me with, a, with accuracy what time it is? Did you just look? Whoa, that's really good. That's really good. Um, so the reason I said that is because without a clock... Right, without 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 some type of uh, of watch, some type of phone, some type of way to keep track of time, it becomes very very difficult to know what time it is with any type of degree of uh, of certainty. Right? After so, you ever had this? You ever had like to wake up and you had no alarm clock, and you're like, I don't know what to do right now. I'm scared. I'm gonna wake up. I'm not gonna wake up. Like, and then you like can't sleep all night. 
You're a little like, I'm afraid, like every like 15 minutes you wake up and there's like eight hours left. Right? I've done that. I really have. I'm like, I guess this is the world of iPhones. But listen, shh, this is what I want to say. It's just like it's difficult to tell time without a clock, without a watch, right? Just like it's difficult to tell time without that. You can't, you can't with any certain degree of accuracy, even though you got it, you got it on the dot, the, you know, if I, if I asked you how certain are you, right, it would be pretty hard for you to say that you're certain. It would. It, would just, it just would be. It's the same way. It's the same way with the way that we live our lives. It is, it is very difficult to live life abundantly. It is very difficult to live life the way that God intended us to live, to live a life of overflow in every area of your life. Right? It's, it's very difficult to live a life with, health, with healthy relationships, with healthy, uh, with healthy friendships, right? with healthy mindsets, with healthy hearts, like living out of an overflow instead of living out of a deficit. It's very hard to do that. And, and I'll be honest, there's some times where people that don't know God, they, they get certain things right. right? Like there's people that, that don't know God and, and they have a great marriage. Right? Like, it, it, it does happen. Right? But there's no direction. There's no direct. When you have God's will, it is your clock. It is your watch. It is your iPhone. It tells you exactly what you need to do, what you need to, what, what you need to be thinking. The Bible says, for example, in your thoughts, it says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, think on such things. Right? Fill your mind with these things. The, Bob, just, just above this, it says, um, you know, uh, in, in, verse, in chapter 5, in verse, you know, uh, uh, verse 3, it starts, it says, But among you there must be no, not even a, a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed because they're improper for God's holy people. It says all the things that, that we shouldn't do. There's clear direction, clear definition, clear boundaries, right? There's some things here that, I'll, that there's, some, there's, there's some biblical wisdom that's found in Proverbs that is, that is the reason why Wendy's and I's marriage is, is working the way that it is. There's some principles in the Bible. There's some principles regarding God's will for our life that allow me to live a life out of overflow instead of out of deficit. Without God's will, it's like trying to tell time. And being on time to places, right, without a watch, without any way to tell time, makes it very difficult, very difficult to live the way that God intended, if not impossible. I'm going to ask you to stand up. <clears throat> I just want to share one story with you guys, okay? I want to share one story that happened to me actually today. Um, so I had to go, I had to go fix the car today, and because uh, there's all these lights, the dashboard looks like a Christmas tree. It's horrible. Like, check engine light, like your tires pressure's low. This is bad. This is bad. I'm like, oh. so I get it to the to the um, to the mechanic, and uh, they fix it. And then I'm on my way home, and I get a flat tire. Out of the mechanic, like, are you kidding me? You know how upset I was. I was like, I was just there. I was just at the mechanic. Like, are you kidding me? I'm not even like three miles down the road, and I have a flat tire. Triple A took forever to get there, so I was like, forget that. I'm just changing the tire myself. But listen, what I thought was going to be an obstacle, what I thought was a negative thing, what I thought was like this big, this, this big problem, the enemy trying to like mess with my mind before Tuesday night, you know, trying to rob me of joy and peace, and, and you know, because sometimes that happens, right? And maybe it was. Maybe it was the enemy trying to mess with me. But you know what's funny? So I'm standing there. Wendy's talking to me. She's trying to figure out AAA stuff. And some random person pulls up in front of my car. Right? And, and he's like, you all right, bro? You need any help? And I was like, I was like you know what? I, I could use some help right now because it's freezing cold. And I'm so sore, okay, like everywhere. So sore that I couldn't, like, use my legs to, like, get the lug knot off, off the tire. So I was like, if you wouldn't mind helping me just get in the first one, then I'll be good after that. So he comes, and his name is Raul. Real cool guy, all right? He's 23 years old, like really stocky looking dude. And uh, he comes, helps me. We start chatting. And uh, he's like, he's, uh, what did he say? He's like, who's on the phone? I was like, that's my wife. He's like, you're married? And I was like, yeah. I was like, I know I look like I'm 18, but I'm not, I promise. 
And I was like, I'm trying to grow this out to make me look older. And he's like, oh, how old are you? I was like, 26. He's like, and you're married? Yeah, I was like, yeah. And he's like, how is it? And I was like, it's the greatest thing in the world. I was like, you get free food. You know, like, you put your clothes on the bed and it disappears and gets washed. It's amazing, you know? And I was joking. I was like, no, no, it's like, it's amazing to have, it's amazing to have a friend that you can count on, trust, and share all your secrets with, and they're still going to be there and still love you. It's, it's really, truly amazing. He's like, man, that's awesome. And then he said, me and my girlfriend of three years, right, we just broke up. I was like, dang. Man, I'm sorry. He's changing my tire, and I'm just, like, holding the stuff. I'm like, dang, that really stinks, man, you know? But, you know, what? I felt like the Lord told me to tell him. He's like, you know what? Sometimes it's better. It's better to let go of the wrong thing than to end up with the wrong thing, you know, marrying the wrong person. So maybe it looks bad right now, but maybe it's a, maybe it's a really good thing that that ended up happening. So we start talking, and he's like, so what do you do, man? What do you, what do, you do for work? And uh, I asked him, well, what do you do? And he's like, well, I just graduated uh, college, and, and, and I'm gonna be, I want to be a police officer. I'm like, man, that's awesome. Like, we need more good police officers. He's like, well, so what do you do? I was like, I'm a pastor. He's like, what? I was like, yeah, man, I'm a pastor of uh, students, and I lead this group called The Forge. They're the best students in the world. They really are. And so we start talking and stuff, and, and he changed my entire tire as I'm talking, okay? I just, I'm doing what I'm good at, and he's doing what he's good at, okay? So I'm talking. I'm telling my life story and stuff. And uh, we start talking. He says that his mom used to take him to church all the time. But that when he was 13, he just stopped going because there was nothing for him. There was no, like, youth group or anything like that. So he just quit. He just stopped going. And he says, you know what? I really should get back into church. I was like, you definitely should. And I was like, and I just happened to know a really great church. And so I start talking to him. And what seemed like a bad situation, what seemed like something that was trying to stop me, hinder me, rob me of my joy, rob me of my peace, right? And maybe it was sent, uh, maybe that was its assignment. Maybe that was the purpose that the enemy had for, for that tire. But guess what? I talked to you about obstacle being the way, right? I talked to you guys about what sometimes seems like a hindrance using that and saying, you know what? I'm not gonna let this be an obstacle. I'm gonna choose to let this be an opportunity. So I chose that moment, and I let it be an opportunity. And I want to tell you that when he was done changing my tire, glory to God, amen. Somebody did it, right? He sends angels. And so I talked to him, and I said, I want to tell you, I'm going to tell you something very real and very honest. I don't believe that this was by coincidence. I believe that this was a divine appointment. I believe that this happened so that I could share the gospel with you and tell you that Jesus loves you and that there's a lot, there's moments in life where God is trying to get your attention, Because we don't always think about God. We're distracted. We have iPhones. We have apps. We have games. We have school. We have college. We have girls, boys, Snapchat, all these different things that are constantly on our mind, right? And so sometimes God tries to get our attention. He says, hey, 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 right here, moment, divine moment, right here. Let's think about me. Think about eternity. Think about heaven and hell. Think about all these different things, right? Because these 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 are questions that we should be pondering, but that... We choose not to ponder, not to think about, because sometimes it's too difficult to think about these things. And so I said, this is a divine appointment, and I believe that God wants to do something in your life. I believe that God is bigger than a church. He's bigger than a church building. And, and, and so God is choosing Route 8 South on Exit 39 to try to change your life, to get your attention. And I want to tell you that you can leave this, this spot right here, this mile marker right here, different than when you came here. You can leave as a different individual. If you would accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he will change your life. Turn it upside down. And actually, he will give you the life that you wish you, that you're chasing after, that you want to have. He literally gives it out freely. I want to tell you that I had the honor and the privilege of inviting him to to follow Jesus. I got to pray with him. People probably thought we were crazy, right, just praying on the side of the road. And uh, he, he almost started crying, but he's a big guy, so he didn't cry, okay? And uh, so Raul didn't cry, and, and he said, man, thank you. He looked me dead in the eyes and said, thank you. I needed that today. I really believe that this was for me. I was like, I believe it. It cost me a tire. So I got his number. I'm going to keep up. And, and so I hope that you guys at some point on Sunday, you will see him, and you guys will know this story about him. Be like, yo, you're Raul. I know you. My challenge to you is look at obstacles as opportunities. The cup is always half full. 
and never half empty when you're with God. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors, right? It says that, dude, I don't, <laughs> my favorite verse is, my favorite chapter is Psalms 1, right? And the Bible says that the righteous prospers in all he does. Whatever, literally, whatever he does prospers. I can't lose. I want you to have that mentality. Listen, there is no obstacle that I cannot face and that God can't turn into an opportunity. There's nothing going on in your life right now that God can't turn into an opportunity. There's nothing too great for God to turn into an opportunity. And that's why he says, make the most out of every situation, out of every opportunity. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Hallelujah, Lord. God, I thank you, Jesus, for your word. I thank you, God, that is living and active. And I pray, Lord God, that it would change us from the inside out. God, I pray, I know there's people in this place, God, that haven't experienced you yet. And I pray, God, that they will in this place, Lord. God, I pray for transformation to happen here. And God, I pray, Lord God, for every obstacle that these students face, whether it be uh, at school, whether it be at home, whether it be uh, in their own mind, God, whether it be uh, in the things that, that they're doing and the people that they're hanging out with, Lord. God, I pray that every obstacle, I pray that you would turn it into an opportunity. God, I pray, God, that our eyes would be set on you. The things, God, that we used to run away from, God, we would now use, God, for your glory. That we would now begin to use, God, to, as opportunities to do things for your kingdom, Lord. God, that we would look at, that we would look at obstacles as weights in a, in, in a weight room to get ourselves stronger, to grow in you, Lord. That we would look at obstacles as opportunities to grow your kingdom, Lord. God, I thank you, Jesus, for every student that's here. I pray that as we go home, I pray that we would think and ponder on these things, Lord. I pray that we would think about how we can make the most out of every opportunity. I pray that you would change your attitudes when it comes to obstacles. I pray, God, for everyone who's in this room that feels like a quitter, who feels like when things get too hard, they quit. When things get too hard, they give up. When things get too hard, they say, I'll just try again later where I can't do it. I pray against the I can't attitudes, and I pray that you would give us, Lord, tonight, God, a mindset of a winner, that you would give us a mindset of someone who is more than a conqueror, of someone that cannot lose, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that you are building us up. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen and amen.